All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's let's come to order, and we'll get started right away. So I call call the meeting to order. Can everybody hear on Zoom? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Let's start. Let's start out with the uh, the secretary's report, the minutes of the November fourteenth meeting. Were there any comments, questions, additions? Oh, I noticed that Lori Martin was listed under staff. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> right. So she's she, 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 born. Yeah, she's in the state. Right. I'll put her up there. Okay. Yes. Any other comments or suggestions? Make a motion for approval. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the, the minutes. All in favor, say aye, raise your hand. Aye. Okay, approved. Are there any, I have no adjustments to the agenda. Leslie, do you? Yeah. Anyone else? Anything to suggest or a change for the printed? Okay. All right. No adjustments. Um, the comments will be very short. First of all, I want to wish everybody a happy holiday season. <laughs> Hope everything's going well. It's a hectic time of the year, and it's been a busy time for the trustees as well. Uh, one of the things we're working on tonight is sort of a seasonal as part of the season two, which is the next year's finance fiscal year's budget, uh -huh. as you'll see. But then we've got other big projects going on, particularly in the HVAC. We get some important information about that to, tonight. And that will be something that will, as Leslie will go into more detail, will require our attention and some decisions quite in the near future. Um, so that's that's the only thing I have to say. We've got a long agenda and I don't want to uh, to read any further. So with that being said, uh, we'll go to the librarian's report. Leslie? No, there's Eileen. Again, I want to. Oh, there's one here. There's one here. Or actually, you said that because I have to confer with you about something in okay. a few minutes or in a bit. Sorry. So uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I want to introduce um, Meredith McGuire, who is on Zoom. So Meredith, down there in the corner, is our new children's uh, room assistant. So Meredith has been here for a little over a month um, since the beginning of November. November. So if you could just um, say hi, Meredith, and if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. So Meredith comes from an education and library background. So if you could just Tell us a, a couple of words about yourself. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but I will anyway. So uh... <laughs> That's okay. I kind of expected it. Uh, so yeah, I was a children's librarian for about 20 years uh, in New Jersey. Uh, then I took a little break, uh, opened up a business. Then I went back and got my education uh, certification and I taught pre-K for about four years. Realized I wanted to be back in the library. So um, when I moved up here, it was during COVID. There weren't really any library jobs. But uh, after a couple of years, I did get a job at uh, Bowdoin College, where I'm currently also working uh, in the library there, the main library. And then I was thrilled to see the children's assistant position open up at Patton. And um, here I am. Great. Great. Welcome. Welcome. Great. Thank you. We're thrilled to have Meredith. She's got a uh, wealth of experience. And, um, okay. We'll yeah, I live in town and I, I've used the library since I've moved here. It's I've always been very impressed with it. So it's great to be a part of the library. Is it possible to go around? We can introduce ourselves, even though the camera things are limited, right? Uh, yeah, I can kind of turn it as yeah. we go. So, yeah. Why don't we do that? So you get a, you get a picture of it. Associated name with the face too, and why don't we? I want to start with Eileen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look at this. Oh, nice giant face. Um, I'm Eileen Harkins. I um, represent Arousic on the board of trustees, and I um, am the board secretary and also the chair of the development committee. So 
Great to meet you. <laughs> I'm next. I'm Suki Hurd. I'm the um the town rep from Arousa because every town gets a representative every other year. Every year on the it rotates on the board. So this is my last meeting, but <laughs> oh well, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Peggy Kaposovsky. I'm from Georgetown. Um, and I'm on the finance and governance committees. Hi, I'm Leah Zartarian. I'm from West Bath and I chair the policy and personnel committee. Carl Ulbricht, I'm the president of the board of trustees. Um, and I've been in, lived in Bath about seven years after moving up from uh, Washington, D.C. So I'm a transplant as well. <laughs> I'm Mike Mason. I am a resident of Bath and I am the vice president. Hi, Alison Epler. I live in Woolwich. And did I hear you say you were born? I was born in Trenton, New Jersey, just mm -hmm. so. Oh, uh, yeah. I lived in New Jersey for about 25 years. I'm actually from outside of Philly, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> me too. Well, anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Camden, New Jersey. Yeah. Yep. From where? Camden, New Jersey. Oh, Camden. Yeah, my daughter lives in Mount Holly now, so I've I've been hanging out in that area a bit. Uh, Dean Emerson, I live in Woolwich, I'm also on the Building and Technology Committee. Hi, Don Lee. I live in West Bath, and I'm a member of the Policy and Procedure Committee. And you know me, Meredith, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Davis, I'm from Woolwich. I chair the Finance Committee. I am Jack Underwood. I'm the reporting secretary. Of the board. Hey. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. And then we have a couple on Zoom. Zoom. Uh, Richard Kessler. I'm on the uh, campaign and the, uh, uh, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> Which finance is, and governance finance, cam campaign finance and um, governance uh, governance committee the governance committee <laughs> and and i'm rudon a counselor from bath great ward four i'm the uh, city rep from city of bath oh Hello. Hi. This is what happened. nice to meet you all Oh, and by the way, Meredith, I uh, moved up in Philadelphia. Oh, really? Uh, Eighteen and a half years ago. Oh, well, all right. Where, where in Philly? Uh, uh, Center City. Um, oh, definitely. Uh, Twenty first Street, Maple Park. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I turned it. Okay. Yeah, I just. So we're having another technical adjustment. Yeah, I I was. Here. Hold on just a minute. Okay, yeah. we're back. Oh, well, you oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> You were not waiting for me. Oh, I'm going to say. <laughs> 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 Okay. 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 Yeah, good. Great. Great. You're you're welcome to continue to be in the meeting if you want to and see it. Or but you know, we just we wanted to have a chance to introduce ourselves to you and to learn a little bit more about you as we do with many people who are who are new hires so to speak to the library. So we're, we're, thank you for making yourself available. All you know, right. I, I, I do have to run, but thank you so much for uh, introducing yourselves. And it was great to meet you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Oh, she's, she's so, yeah, I know we have a, a lot on the agenda, so I just wanted to, and I know Eileen will probably talk about a night at the patent, but we have a um, a lot of staff are putting in a lot of work into this weekend's uh, Saturday event, so I hope, and I see a lot of wine and things coming through the door, so I hope uh, uh, that you will consider attending this uh, our, our first time trying this event um, in in tandem with our um, Starry Night. Um, it's going to be a really fun time. We have great music. 
um, food, of course, the wine, um, and we've got some lovely decorations inside, and you get to meet my mom, who is now officially in Maine, um, so yeah, but it's going to be uh, a great time, and um, really looking forward to it. Again, we have a very busy, chock full month, if you haven't seen our uh, schedule or e-news. We've got Mrs. Claus tonight, but there's something almost every day this month um, between gingerbread making and cupcake decorating that was going on. And it's just, it's a chalk-filled month that I know everybody's busy in the month of December. Um, and of course, if you read the monthly report, uh, you'll know. And also with our agenda, we have a lot going on with the um, sustainability, uh, you know, HVAC project and um, preparing the budget and um, quite a bit. So, uh, and we'll be talking about this. Work. But again, um, uh, please join us Saturday night. So I'll leave my comments at that. <laughs> I have a question, Leslie, at least something we, a group of us, have talked about. And I, you know, I think, I guess it's more or less been resolved, but it was mentioned in the staff report several times. That was about the parking complications mm -hmm. across the way. So yeah, they seem to be much better right now. So okay. we'll cross our fingers um that they stay that way at least with the construction. Mm -hmm. Um you know when they when I, I think we'll we'll have our challenges ahead when the apartments open, but we'll be we'll need to coordinate some efforts with the city and with the uh, management company about that. Um but for now this seems to have much improved. Did you ever hear back from the city official about the uh, details of the construction permit? No, I have not. Yeah, nor have I from a, someone separate that I contacted. Yeah, before. I have not heard anything about the about the details of the permit, but it has has greatly improved. Okay. Um, that I know. Okay. Uh, I mean that we can definitely see. Uh, we have seen a you know. Okay. If you'd like to follow up? Just give me a shout or drop me an email. Quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. What, Drew? If you want to follow up um, on the parking thing, feel free to give me a, a shout. Let's okay. Yeah, we just like to see what the permit, what it said, right? As far as the construction yeah. permit, what the yeah. what the parking cool. requirements. Yeah. It's my understanding, Rue, when they did the permitting, it uh, it said uh, they couldn't park right there; they had to find other places to park, which is why you, you see them. On they're the not supposed to be occupying street parking. They're supposed right. to provide parking somewhere, which usually means they have the least parking lot. Parking. 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 They, they leased that parking lot down by the uh, Hampton Inn. So that was, uh, yeah. that was the space they were supposed to use. But yeah. they get a little, you know, they don't really pay much attention to it. And as a result on the Giving Tuesday, we had a lot of problems. We really didn't raise very much at all. Yeah. Right. Is that's our understanding of what it was, and that we'd ask for verification, confirmation from now two different people in the city, and haven't heard back from either. Who who was that that you reached out to? I, Leslie. You so saw. one was because he's uh, the, uh, what is his name? Uh, he's the animal control, the animal control animal officer control. McKnight, um, and but he yeah. also serves in other capacities. So yeah. Jim McKnight is that his name? Yeah. That's yeah. And I re I contacted Rod Rod Melanson. Okay. He and I have to talk about it informally at another committee meeting. So we have uh, committee assignments and a workshop tomorrow night. Let me see what I can learn while I'm in the building. Okay. We'd just like just like to get an answer one way or the other, so we know. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is is the problem with parking the um the construction? Um, or is it also there were more people, you know, coming and going in the library, so the parking lot, you know, it, it, it gets too full. Our issue okay. was the construction trucks. Yeah. 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 Work, work oh, okay. Trucks. Work yeah. Trucks. It was very evident. Yeah, very evident. Mm -hmm. work yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. On Giving Tuesday, the library was exceedingly quiet, and the lot was almost full. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. it, was full. it was full. Oh, okay. Full of a pickup truck. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. There did happen to be though on that day there were four trucks that were here for the library. There was some we had oh, some, our own work having yeah, been done. We had some heating issues, and 
EMC was here actually doing a walkthrough. Karen Robbins was here meeting with EMC. So actually four of the directs were here for the library. Yeah. So there, that just happened to be. Okay. So 11, there are 11 uh, trucks. There are 11 trucks and I don't know about some of the other vehicles. But for yeah. Vehicles. I mean, there again, there were four were for the library. We're here, you know, doing work for the library on that yeah, day. Yeah, on other days that come on Friday. Oh yeah, there were there are trucks there. Are, couldn't they, find a parking place. Yeah, right. So it's, yeah. it's, it's not just that day. It's not. It's, it's, very, it's an ongoing issue. It sounds like an ongoing. Issue. Right. It's an ongoing issue. There, there, there. Even without the trucks, there aren't enough space. Yeah. I mean, it's the you know. So where does yeah. the staff park? In the lot because we don't have, and that's where staff park too. We don't. We don't have any other place to park except street parking. Because that probably takes up. A fair oh, it takes up lots of right spaces. Right there, staff. Yeah. So I wonder if some. I don't right. I mean, it's yeah. it's a, it's a, I think it's a big place? it's a big issue we have to discuss all the way around because. It's if they're, if they're good, if we're going to have the police start policing the lot, then we have to the staff park there for more than four hours at a right. time. So it's a, it's a really big discussion that we're going to have yeah, to have. It's a larger issue, but the one we were concerned with right now is the, 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 the construction group, yeah. which could even right. worse, basically. Right. So, so that we're going to figure out if they were really acting appropriately within the limits of the permit. Right. And so that's there'll be more to. Right. More to come on that. So I'll report there'll be future meetings on how we're gonna handle the whole park the whole parking issue. The well, right. issue. Any, anything else, Mr. Oh, and I just wanted to thank Suki for her service on the board. We really appreciate yeah. well, it. I want to thank you all for the opportunity because I've had it. It's really I, I mean it's been fun to put what I see when I'm in the library just staffing things and everything and put it. And then see the bigger picture that goes with it. It's just, it's just, it's very eye opening. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to do it again. Perfect. So thank you all. Thank you, <laughs> thank you too, for your commitment and enthusiasm for this. It's always very evident. All right. Move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda as listed in? In the meeting agenda, and we'll go through with the individual. Seconded by leading. All in favor? Okay. Consent agenda is accepted. Let's start out with the monthly report. Always full of lots of interesting stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I caught one typo, Elizabeth, in your section. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> a good one. Um, <laughs> The second paragraph, second line, it talks about flowering up. I think that's oh, yeah. probably following up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was very nice. Very <laughs> <term up. laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lovely thing. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> well, I have to hold this. Um, and uh, I'm just curious now, since it's mentioned, adding some volunteers. How many volunteers are there now? Go to one of the Oh, all together? Um, active, probably around 20. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow. That is a big yeah. You know, fluctuation, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But yeah. that was since you mentioned them. And um, also, I thought that was great to hear that, see that the Prepare Cafe has such a great reception. Yeah, that was nice. And then it rotates in only three yeah. libraries. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's just great stuff. You should take advantage of it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other? Hello. Has the new meeting reservation, meeting room reservation system been deployed yet? That's still. Nope. Yeah. What are the prospects when you think it will be? I am not um, sure. Yeah, I'm having a hard time even getting the demo from them. So, uh, oh, they're spot. Uh, they being who? Uh, LibCal. Spring Shear is the company, mm -hmm. and LibCal is the product. And mm -hmm. um, I've used it on a lot of other libraries, use it. It's, Fantastic product. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we would use that for Zoom reservations. Um, and it would also feed into our web calendar. Uh, so we would put the demo system. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It will be worth it when we get it. <laughs> so when people reserve a room and you're doing it that way, 
will you capture some data from them, like their names and where they're from, or be able to find out? Exactly. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So they can serve right online. Um, it will tell them immediately whether it's available or not, and then it'll also capture the information. Yeah. Very clever. Okay. I was very appreciative of the um, screening of Dawnland. Um, yeah. yeah, which I had not seen and knew I should watch, and I did, and I was not not able to join in the live discussion, but um, very powerful and really a great um, yeah. resource yeah, I, to have out there for. I was able to attend to live and then enjoyed the discussion afterward. It was very good, interesting people with different backgrounds coming yeah. and explaining their their interest and then their connection to some of those issues that were raised. So yeah, you know, it was very good. And I think you can still still available to watch, right, Don Land? Uh, yeah, I don't know when the cutoff for the yeah, streaming. Like the that's that I'm not sure about. I thought it was longer. I thought it was a yeah. whole year. Maybe it's a whole year. Oh, is it a whole year? Whole year? Yeah, yeah, I'd have to check with Mary Kate. So oh, if anyone sure. hasn't seen it, do well, it. I do haven't it. seen it. Oh, do it. It's it's not very long. No, it's only about an hour. Yeah. It's surprising. Yeah. I thought that would be longer too. Right. The oh. From itself would be longer. Right. Very The library website. Yeah, how would you how do you stream it? Is it on the library? Uh I will have to check and see if the link is still there. Um mm -hmm. I can find yeah. out. I'm having to hold this to You know, I wanted to ask um Elizabeth, I think. Um well, maybe it's because I had had done the job the sharing, you know, at the reference got me thinking, we don't hear from reference at all. I mean, right. Um Thanks for bringing that up because I was just talking with Leslie about in the monthly report and different kinds of things. I would love to um, highlight a different team each time and specific members because we have an incredibly talented reference. Um, and and they're uh, uh, so that is going to come up and we'll probably squeeze it in my report. Um, but focus on a different team, different member, what they're doing professionally out in the larger library world and what they're doing here. So um, oh good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was so interesting when I reference. So yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah good. And yeah. we'll we'll have them come to board meetings too and present. Yeah, too. We just great. this month we've had a lot um a we lot uh it was, go, it was interesting going on. No, it's there's something, yeah, there's something going on. Okay. It's just, it's finicky. Okay. It's okay. It's finicky. Um, um, I'll hold it for now. I may switch with you. One more question about the month before. I just wanted to know how you feel about, I guess, the reasoning behind the library joining, I guess, the BAT runs with Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. So we were members. Uh, many years ago and it didn't feel like it was of much benefit but it seems to kind of have evolved a little bit more and we're feeling like there's more benefit now for the library there it seems to be more nonprofits involved there's a nonprofit rate um i don't know if it has to do with anthony including us more in thing and we've been attending some um lunches and i've attended some after hours things and it seems to be um, that there's more uh, uh, networking and more where there's more nonprofits and more ways for us to network with businesses. And so we're going to try it for a year um, and, and see how it goes. How much is the membership? Uh, for nonprofits for our size, it's $250. This is the Southern Mid Coast. In Southern Mid Coast. And it, there's also been a change in their leadership. There's a, a new ED. We, I don't know how that he's so new. Corey King? Mm -hmm. He's been there since before COVID. Before, yeah. When I became director, we were a member for about a year, and it's just, or maybe even before that, but uh, it just was not really beneficial to the library. We weren't really getting much out of it, but it, I wanted to try it again because it sure. did it seem like with. I think we're members. Are you? But it just seems like Anthony's been inviting us to things, and I'm I'm starting to feel that there is could be a connection there that's worthwhile. So yeah, that's so we are joining, and we're gonna uh, attend some things, some after hour, do some more of that, and okay. see Thanks. see how it goes. Good. Yeah. Good. Any other comments or questions about the monthly staff report? I'm gonna miss those, but Roger, Roger gets them as a corporate. I'm gonna be able to watch them. <laughs> Uh, I can. <laughs> okay. Um, building in technology. Which ties into the larger... Oh, I have a question about that. 
Um, I noticed that you said that the pods were not ADA compliant. And I wondered if that would be an issue with the grant. Um, not this particular grant, but because we have that other one that does allow for right. the ADA acceptability that these don't have to. They don't have to. Okay. I am waiting. I have uh, no, I'm waiting for the, the application. Does it? I have to apply with Red Thread just to get set up the account, and that they have the the forms to set up the account. And once that paperwork has been come, have they have it and have set up the account, then I place the order. So I'm just waiting for that paperwork to go through. Anything else? Finance. So, direct all your questions to Tommy. So, the budget's under new business. Yeah. So, that's where that'll be. Yeah. Budget's probably the old Yeah. Yeah. Frank, yeah. 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 Friends, we don't have a record, but are there any questions? I saw that friends are recently, as we know, have increased their annual contribution by two thousand dollars. It's appreciated. Is that sustainable? Yeah. I think so. I mean that they were up to eighteen, I think, thousand before. So this puts them at seventeen. So they were at eighteen thousand before. Yes, their highest I think was eighteen. Okay. Pre pandemic. Oh. Oh. Okay. I think adding the friends, uh, the option to join the friends on the uh, remittance envelope has helped increase mm -hmm. membership a little bit. So that's what I understood. Yeah. Have, uh, so I think formally, yeah. it would be nice to see, yeah, what the next, how that, yeah. you know, a full cycle of that. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Governance. Well, Steve is. Is triple triple book today for meetings, so yeah. we'll try to be here. But it may be it may be late for another. I have I have one addition because I was at the governance committee meeting, and I, Leah, you correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, in addition to what was described in the minutes, we also discussed coming up with a charter for the governance committee, and you uh, very graciously agreed to work on that. That was my other task. I've got through tasks. Yeah. To work on that because being in policy and personnel, she's uh, involved in those kinds of issues already. Absolutely. I just say that for the longer term, I think all committees should have a charter or a statement for the governance yeah. documents so they understand what their what their responsibilities and their remit is. But we were going to start with the governance committee to make sure that we have a focus on what issues we should be we think we should be doing. And make sure that, and then present that to the board to make sure they concur. Good. So. And the survey, if I can yeah, go into that, you know, the, the governance, a little the governance committee. Um, the, the survey, you probably all received a copy. Um, the survey went out to incorporators, and um, the committee all, uh, we all gave input and had drafts, and then Steve put it all um, together. And um, uh, you probably also saw we requested a date for return by I think December 22nd. So at our next meeting, you know, hopefully we'll have some data to discuss and and then um, present at another board meeting. Good. Um, Thank you. Was raising an I, issue oh, about we're, yeah. we're corporators, and so those of us on I, I'm assuming we should answer it. Yeah. Yeah, I wondered about that. I, I didn't think about it when we were at the meeting, but, but since we are all corporators, but on the other hand, you're not we're no, well, not most graduate. of us, I think, are. Yeah. yeah. And so we're a different. I mean, will it skew? I was thinking that because we're obviously more active <laughs> than most of the know, corporators, because. So I was just wondering, and I forgot to raise it at our meeting. Is I, what? I think you can just answer it. They put your I mean, or, or identifying your name. It's yeah. not anonymous. You right. Put yeah. your name. That's what I saw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that what you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Fun. Oh, all right. I just you put it in contact. Yeah. Yeah. Put it there. yeah. yeah. Helpful. I'll try to. Helpful. I know. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was yeah. funny when I looked at it. I thought, well, yeah, well, I'm active because of that, but as a corporator. 
right now. So it's sort of right. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Um, policy and personnel. And we are going to talk about the gift acceptance policy. Yes. Under new business. Yeah. I think the minutes speak for themselves. We went through two policies. The one we thought barely met the criteria and didn't need to um, review. Um, can you all still hear on the? You can. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? I think the one interesting thing is we'd been talking about doing two policies, and there there's going to be more extensive discussion. So that was in the first first part of the minutes um, was the artist letter of intent and agreement and. Um, library exhibits and displays and there, there's the staff is working on that so we we table that and it's good I think it's going to be interesting it's going to be engaging uh, some artists from the community and I think making a more clear more detail they need a lot of staff input and outside and uh, so I thought that, that's going to be interesting as that comes about so that's that's in process of being it's future because I kept I put it through a couple times thinking it was going to be on our agenda waiting for staff input and there's more complexity than I was first appreciating. So okay, yeah, because I, I wasn't sure whether you were. Yes, so that's kind of on on indefinite. Okay, but it's been worked on by the staff. Okay, so the and the, and the goal is to make it clear to any artist that wants to um, exhibit and display what the what the rules are, what our criteria are, and what they can expect from the library. And yeah, expect and I think artists. making it clear that what's more than my understanding is that sometimes library staff have been getting left with work that really should be, I think that it's making it clear who's going to be responsible for what. Okay. In terms of setting it up right. um, oh, right. Yeah. and right, that type of thing. Okay. So, and then Leslie had mentioned too about programming so that there might be a way to even uh, have the artists do a program, you know, mm -hmm. to explain, you know, the different opportunities for engagement. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, Anthony was another one who was. He was going to, he said he was going to be here around five, but okay. um, he had a prior uh, commitment. So our, why don't we why don't we want to move on to the development report? We can and see if he shows up, and if not, I can just give a brief report. But uh, okay, uh -huh. Samantha usually provides me with some really nice notes, but she's so busy that I did not get those. She's sick. Anyway, we have a very uh, relatively recent annual fund total, um, which including pledges is almost $82,000, which is our goal for the year is 135. So um, really nice progress towards that goal. Um, and of course, top of mind for Samantha and others in the library, as Leslie mentioned, is the event, uh, are the events on Saturday. Um, so if you have not yet had a chance to buy tickets, you should buy tickets for, it's $20 in advance to buy tickets for the um, Night of the Patent. 25 at the door. Rick is going to be doing his best uh, Tom Cruise uh, imitation. He's going to be mixing up some mocktail. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we have uh, various volunteers who have signed up to. It's going to be a punch. A punch. Oh, there good. you go. Good. Yeah. That's, that's smart. So you got to practice. Practice your, your moves. <laughs> um, and uh, there's still opportunities to sign up and help. Uh, with luminary display, um, bringing food or drink. All trustees were asked to bring a bottle of wine or two, donate a bottle of wine or two. So if you have not done that, please drop off some wine to the library. Yeah, I think we've actually got a lot of wine. Okay. Then don't. Yeah. We, uh, I think what we still really need is food. Food is what we're still, I believe. I was going to ask what, what, is in, what is still needed. We're needing like I don't, and this is, but I hate to almost say what though, because I don't know what people have signed up for, but we do have a lot of wine. I know, but I do. Uh, I know somebody signed up to bring in like a charcuterie right. class. Right. We need we um, savories. Yes, things yeah, like that. Um, so yeah. if you that are idea. able to, that'd be great. Um, little nibbles for people to, mm -hmm. you know, that are easy to grab and walk around with. 
Um, there's gonna be live music. It's gonna be a nice night. So yeah. I haven't looked at weather. I don't know what's happening, but I don't. I know we're not expecting snow. Mm -hmm. That I know. Okay. <laughs> so the food is like appetizing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, thanks to the staff and uh, Samantha and everyone, right. you and Hannah, putting it all together. Um, and what else? Um, looking forward to January, we have a business appeal coming um, <laughs> that will involve the Board of Trustees um, to help sign letters, um, mm -hmm. if you've signed up to steward a business, to help to you know tap that business on the shoulder and see where they're at with donating. Um, oh, and also in reference to the event too, um, I, over the weekend, sent an email, just an email to all the people I steward and just said, this event is happening on Saturday. It's a lovely thing. Like, if you have time, please stop by. So if you have an opportunity to do that, that's a great way. You don't have to call people. You could just send an email um, just to remind people that it's happening. And I know that the luminary, the starry, the luminary event in the park has been very popular. So, yeah. um, it, you know, if you want to encourage people as an extension of that event, come inside after enjoy the stuff. Perfect. That's what I have. Forecast is for the mid 40s and partly sunny for Saturday as of right now. Yeah. Oh. It's always been so cold. I've usually been standing out at the big sale table right. with friends. It's, it's, so it's really cold. cold. Yeah. It's cold. It's wet. Well. Yeah. 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 Last year was no, raining. Well. It's it's raining. Yeah. Oh, yeah. raining last year? Tom, it's it's snowing. A little like sleepy. 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 Yeah. Sleepy. Yeah. 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 And no. we still had a lot of people show up. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been. Okay. That's good. We changed the agenda around thinking you might show up. So there you are. That's why I know you did. And I said, I thought you're right. That's why I said you said you would be around five. So we moved on. And we are ready to do that, or we can do something else first. I'll give you one more thing. Okay. And we can connect to the internet first. Okay. Tell town, sorry, and area school activities. Is there anything to report on that? Oh, you should be starting to get some of the town things, especially for those of us who are late, like Georgetown and Arelsic, the town municipal contribution should be coming in as the people start paying their taxes. Everything went out late. It goes out late in the fall. So the tax Ours went out in September just saying this would be. Oh, you went out in September? Well, oh, <laughs> I was just for now. Yeah, I know that's yeah, that's what, yeah. yeah, so did I. So it's been it's Pete. We said the, the municipalities wait until they have some money coming in before they pay us. So yeah, yeah. that's it, that it should come. Okay. So we've had Beth, Beth and West Beth so far. We've got three. I know we're expecting, we figured 90, we, at the last finance committee, we were talking about this. There was, we're expecting $96,000 still in municipal contributions. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. I think represents a Ralsic. <laughs> Maybe Georgetown and Watertown and as it will when we usually get them right at the end of the year or right in the beginning of the of January. Yeah. And Leslie, can you tell me if the city of Bath has paid? We paid. Yes, right? the city of Bath has paid. Yes. Yeah. To make sure I could sit here. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Really yeah. embarrassing when we don't pay our bills. Yes, it was oh, I think right. early November, oh, I believe. Yeah. And earlier. Paid up. <laughs> yeah, are you ready now or you want to go? I'm ready. Okay, please. go ahead. <laughs> um, so, well, I'll say I don't have a whole lot uh, to necessarily report, which I think is good. As far as PL goes, uh, really nothing nominal to that sticks out. Uh, we're we're chugging right along. As we said, we are waiting for a few more like, municipal contributions, which are coming as expected. Um, as, far, as far as the cash on hand, um, that is also as expected. Uh, one thing to note, um, as you'll see on what we call the cash report, under the, uh, let's see, so on the top there, the bank account, you'll see where it says ARPA grant. So that is the uh, fund that we received from the ARPA grant that is sitting there waiting for us to use. And then you'll also see a line item that says HVAC. Yep. That represents a contribution that we received um, after the corporators meeting, somebody uh, felt moved to uh, give us some money towards that project. And so we opened an account uh, to put it to there to sort of earmark, if you will, for the project that Perfect. will uh, be coming up. Perfect. Um, I don't have the value as of today, Leslie might. Oh, I do, uh, I do. Here, I'll tell you. So as of, as of 12-11, 
the value of the endowment was $7,932,101.78. That's why I want to endorse that. I had a feeling it would be just a little bit higher than yes. it was on the 1st of December. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's okay. good. And uh, in case for people keeping track, we have drawn about half of yeah. our usual draw. Uh, which is right on schedule. We will draw the other half likely sometime in the spring, give or take. Um, we draw it when we need it. So, yeah. so it's, it's sort of staying there. So uh, we're right on schedule for that. Did anybody have any questions on um, either the cash report or the I I just had a procedural question. Um, and and the, the P&L shows the current month the July to October of the current year, so the I guess that's the half year, is that right? Year to date in percentage. Yeah. yeah. Have you considered showing a year over year? So you're showing October 23 and you show October 22. Okay. Leslie, did you hear that question? I'm sorry, say that again. He's asking if we've considered doing a year over year rather than percent or in addition to percent to budget. In addition to, yeah. Uh, we could. And, um, and I just think it's a good comparison because I look at it and I go, looks like we're doing pretty well. We're halfway through the year, about yeah. slightly more than 50% of our revenue. Um, But I don't know where we were last year at the same time. It, Except that our budget it, it was different. So it's, I mean. It, it, not it, not it, just strictly about revenue, but, you know, expense as well, of course. So we could like I don't we do want to talk about in finance. Yeah, see. I, mean, I think that's something it, to discuss. Yeah, I think I mean it might be confusing since it is a different budget. It, right, that's the only so thing. Or, or so right, do percentage. Could you do just a percentage? Yeah, compare the percentage. Well, I think under so what I think is we we can look into what we can do. So right now, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what we can offer through the software we use, but I think we could look into it. Right, and, and see what discuss it can. That's what may be the best option. Just anecdotally, uh, whenever discussing reports like this and adding information, I always fear overcomplicating and confusing people. So as long as we can do it in a way that doesn't confuse uh, too much and actually lends more, I always want to err on this, on the, not on the side of less information, but I don't want to overcomplicate things because sometimes you get too many things if you're not used to reading these day in and day out, it can just get yeah. really messy. And I got to see what our bookkeeper can do. Like, well, I want to see. That's the other question. I got to Paul, able and willing. Yeah. <laughs> and wouldn't it be another form? Because that wouldn't really be the P&L, would it? Well, no, it would, it would be for what oh. we're discussing. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would. Thank you. Uh, I, I think it'd be great if you'd consider it. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Yep. And was, was it a pending issue or did we agree with it about the um, question I raised about line eight of the 990 and the, the difference in 22 to 23, the, the decrease in, in uh, grants, the grants and donations. And we thought it was because the grants had gone down. Yeah, so I, I don't know that... if we 100%, you were going to look into that after our last yeah. meeting, but what we posited was the likely case is that was higher in the year previous due to the forgiveness of, of the timing, BP of the loan. forgiveness of the BPP loan. Okay. Which oh. if I were a betting man, I would bet that's likely right. what it is. We just had to dive in a little bit further. Um and let us going to check with the bookkeeper and just dive yeah. in a little bit further to make sure that is what it was. But we're I would say we're yeah. pretty close to fairly yeah. clear that that's what yeah. so when you check follow up with that yes. it's just kind of that's just yeah, and the timing might seem a little bit off, but um, just for uh, everyone to know, those are not going to be recognized, were not recognized as income and as a grant until it was forgiven. And it right. was forgiven at fair time after it was received. Right. So it would be on the books a little bit late. Okay. Okay. Right. Anything else for me? Thank you for moving things around to make. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so we'll move on now then to old business. And old business, big things here building improvements on the HVAC project update. 
And there's, as you did quite a bit of that, described quite a bit already, but let's, anything more, is there more to discuss? So yeah, I and building committee, if there's anything, but I just kind of wanted to sort of let you know sort of where the project stood right now and what's been going on in the last few weeks. So EMC, and I probably put this in my monthly report too, but EMC has been visiting and Karen Robbins has been has been meeting with them and walking around the, the building. They've been, they're sort of wrapping up their um, uh site visits to the library. They've done some work on um, building envelopes so they can build in any last uh, minute things with if there are any windows or doors or openings that need any um, kind of addressing. They don't anticipate any additional large expenditures added to sort of that general 1.2 million sort of you know, number, but they might add a little bit to that. Uh, and then they've been just doing some additional like measuring and things like that, just to make sure that they have what they need to give us sort of final project numbers. So what my what the expectation is now is that we'll receive the final project budget in early January. So now knowing that, what's going to happen is the ball is going to kind of be in our court. So. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot with Karen Robbins about what that means. We had Karen and I had a Zoom meeting with with Tom Seekins of EMC just to kind of discuss timeline. Of course, it's up to the library, you know, what we do, you know, from there. And one of the things, as I talked about in my monthly report, we're just we're at a sort of an information gathering stage. Um, I've been getting some information on financing. The Capital Campaign Committee has been doing some work, and we'll be talking about that. Um, and then we're, we're putting together different scenarios, if we do this, if we do that. Um, but, uh, but it is moving along, and so we do all have to acknowledge that. Uh, and the other piece is... Once we have that budget from EMC, those numbers, you know, there are some considerations in that, um, you know, what I talked with Karen Robbins about is we don't know how, how long EMC will hold that price. So, um, you know, we, we, and we also don't know how long, you know, EMC, they have other projects that they're working on, right. what their time frame is. It doesn't mean that we have to immediately you know, sign a contract and move forward, you know, within two or three weeks. But we also have to be sort of look at their considerations. That price may be only good for 30 days and then they're going to, you know, come back with the new price. Like, we don't know any of this. So it's just something to consider as we're, you know, looking at the project. Um, and we'll know more once we get, you know, those numbers from EMC. So it is moving along and um, we just kind of need to be ready. So what we're doing now is just I'm doing a lot of legwork um, and just gathering information. Um, and so as I, I've talked with Tommy, I've talked with Anthony, we're, we've, again, I put all this in my monthly report. We're I'm just gathering some information on loans, like, we're, you know, we're just going to look and see what our options are. Elizabeth has been working on a small grant. We're going to be looking at some larger grants. Um, I attended uh, uh, and some of the building and tech uh, committee members attended a couple of webinars several months back put on by the Maine State Library. There are some uh, energy tax credits that we may be eligible for. I'm actually going to be reaching out to our um, our accountant. We had talked to him about this uh, before, and he didn't. He said the rulings had not been made yet. So we're hoping that they have. We think there's been some rulings made. There may be money, even though we don't pay taxes, um, that there is actual money that we can get for some of these projects, cash that we'll be able to, to get back. So I'm going to be investigating that. Elizabeth's got a larger grant she's going to be working on. We're just about to send off for a $15,000 grant for lighting, specifically for lighting. Um, so we're going to be trying to do whatever we can. As, and also, so there's a lot of balls in the air right now. Um, so it's a really busy time trying to figure out how how we can make this project happen. Um, I some of those um, Chamber of Commerce folks could uh, come in with some contributions. 
ones. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if any of them are honey. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we, the, where EMC has been helpful. So I'll tell you, where, where they've been connecting us with brokers that do, um, that work with municipalities, um, and other on these very types of projects. So one possibility, uh, because interest rates are high right now, yeah. is partnering with um, either a, a municipality or the county mm -hmm. to, um, to, if they guarantee the loan, then we're looking at shaving off a couple, you know, percent and making yeah. the, which, That's and it could be, be, it could be Sagadahawk County as well. And so of course we have Steve as our commissioner for Sagadahawk County, which is, you know, so, but again, we, you know, these are just ideas. So there are, you know, we're going to just have to get creative and see, see what our options are and look at all of the options. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just gathering information to see, to see. Um, What's a rough estimate, Leslie, when you think there'll be a little more, um, a little more deal detailed information on the, the financing options. I know we've talked about this in finance committee too. So I know the finance committee wants to obviously look at that and answer it. Right. But okay. it, it's, you know, we know there are these, it's unusual, there are special programs, as you alluded to. But in terms of, since you say we shouldn't uh, delay once we get the figures, then well, so that means we'll have to be pretty, have a pretty clear idea of what the best financing option is is and what's available so what do you what so do you... here this is kind of this is the thing and I've, I've been thinking a lot about it and we'll be talking about this too when we talk about the so so we're going to be talking about a capital campaign feasibility study so the, it, it's something i've been thinking about quite a bit so these loans it, it, especially if we're going to have a if if it's a if we do a loan, actually, I think even if we do a loan, that's that the library assumes the debt, or, or if we do a, a you know a guaranteed you know a loan, what they call a tax exempt lease no, loan through a municipality or or the or the county, there's a penalty, a two percent penalty payback on any remaining balance. So if we're going to do a capital campaign or something where we actually are going to receive, you know a chunk of change or we're going to have a penalty for paying back early. So okay. we have to think about that in the right. mix of all of this. Right. So if we think we're going to be getting, if we're going to be doing a capital campaign, we have to decide these are, these are all the issues we're going to have to talk about. Do we want to borrow from the endowment and then, you know, for part of it and reduce that penalty. So, you know, there's this, if, if we can turn around quickly and have this feasibility study done within a couple of months, do we, is it prudent to try to get that study done to figure out what we can raise before we decide what loan amount we should consider? Wow. So these are all the things that we need to, this different scenarios, I think the finance committee needs to sort of present to well, the board I think bonds and all, all, all of I it didn't say it like that but there are different scenarios of each option right one of them is some one option could have a prepayment penalty another option may not right. and so those are just sort of what goes right. into the research that we're doing that's what we're doing right so we have to do the, all, board, the whole yeah, option we have to that's what, what i'm saying Right. Different amounts, right. prepayment penalties versus non Not prepayment penalties right. versus, you know, and you, you get you can get into some nitty gritty details on how much you could save versus this if you right. knock it down by two percent to go with the one that has prepayment versus this if right. you did this. Or if you borrow, you know, if you borrow 75% of, of the loan, if you borrow so we have to present all so that right. that the whole idea is presenting yeah. a lot of, of scenarios yeah, right. to the but board. Generally speaking. Generally, yeah. Yeah. So right. for, it's probably right. going to be something that we have to. We're going to probably have to have an extra board meeting and do yeah. some, right? Because you know, we're going to have to move quickly when it, you know, right. And, and the other thing we don't know is how long they'll hold that price for. Like you know, and and then so those that's the kind of information once they give us the you know the, mm -hmm. the hard numbers. Right. How long is that good for? When that we don't know. The, the, the best scenario would be for you to have a couple of different uh, uh, potential lenders yeah. and let them uh, compete for the board for your loan. 
well, that's what I have right now. So I'm waiting. I actually have another lender that's giving me, um, a, I'm, I'm got a meeting with them tomorrow. Uh, we met with Bass Savings. We have a municipal leasing company. And then I have a, another one that EMC recommended that does a similar type of loans. So they're going to be, and then I'm going to meet with Tommy and, and Anthony and discuss all of this, see if we want to meet with any more lens, see what we want to do. Um, you know, where else we want to reach out to. And, um, you know, so we, we will have, right. We'll have three options there, but then there, you know, there's, and I've asked for different, you know, scenarios on different loan periods and also um, borrowing different amounts. Is there any scenario where um, capital campaign funds could go into the endowment and you just earmark them for paying off the loan? So you're not necessarily prepaying the loan. You don't right. have that penalty, but you're just using those funds to continue the payments on the loan. That, that certainly could be a thing. One of the things, one of the factors we'll have to look into is, um, is if we were to say we were to raise all the money to pay off the principal balance of the loan within say two years. And we, we what we'd have to look at is two options. One is how much is it is a prepayment penalty. So it could be beneficial to where if we looked at we had the rest of the money to pay off within two years and say it was a 10 year, we'll just say it had 10 years left, say it was 12 years, wouldn't be, but say it has 10 years left. We have to look at the amount of interest you're going to pay over right. that time versus the two percent. Two percent, maybe it's cheaper. Right. It, it would worse. likely make a heck of a lot more sense. So we could do that, and that could be an option in the beginning mm -hmm. while we're sure. sort of getting things going right. to help cover it. But it, that's one of the things where we want to get all the information together because when, like earlier, when we heard 2% penalty, oh, that's a bummer. But it's a heck of a lot better than the $500,000 or more you're going to pay in interest. After that. Right. So right. So yeah. It's one of those things, it, there's just a lot of right. nuance involved in that. And it might not be a bad thing because you'd be paying off while you're paying off early, you'd still be, you pay ready, you could be saving money. Yeah, I'd say, who oh, knows how to look at but right. likely. So we'd have to look at that, yeah, so which is which is the better deal. About, um, on those options, but to answer your question directly, yes, you, you could do that. Right. We so chose. Mm -hmm. yeah. You right. also negotiate that prepayment penalty to a period of maybe two years. Generally speaking. Right. And it depends on the auction because some of these folks will sell this into certain things. So they're sold into certain funds and that's why they right. do prepayment penalties because they're, it's a debt that's bought that goes into a fund that uh -huh. you know how that works. And that's why some of them do that because it's done that way. And some of it's a prepayment for so many years and then yeah. it's not. So there's options, yeah, right. right? So we have to look at all of that, okay. you know? So there's, so, yeah. right. So the thing that well, Corey, the yeah. inability of actually doing a capital campaign is probably going to figure into the calculus here. To well, a certain extent, and, right? and that's the question then yeah. is like how we wanted to, and, and we'll get to the capital campaign yeah. that the feasibility study is how quickly we can move on that may inform the decision of the of how much we want to borrow on a loan. I mean, so that's why I threw that out there. It's something to yeah. consider. So there's so many balls in the air right it's now. A um, lot of chicken and egg scenarios. Right. There's a lot of chicken and egg scenarios. So the yeah, that's what I was going to ask because it's chicken and egg is exactly right. what I was thinking. But yeah. so exactly where who are the decision making bodies at this point? Because you kind of alluded to some of them, but with so many balls in the air, it's who the, who are you talking about for the most immediate next steps? So, so what are the immediate next steps? No, who, who are you? Who are the committees? I mean, who, who are, could you mention getting together with Anthony? Or is it so? So, the, actually, the reason I mentioned getting together with Anthony and Tommy is like yes. what I think. So, as the as finance, so the finance oh, committee is going to what I the but I think what I want to do is smart with, start start with a smaller ad hoc group of the finance committee so that we can present to the finance committee the the mm -hmm. option so that the finance committee can can present them to the board make a recommendation make a, either a recommendation or yeah however the finance yeah. committee yeah. wants to move forward so this will move through the finance committee but rather so we're, it's going to be a small that that's how we're going to kind of move okay right yeah. so it will be it'll come from the finance committee well, um also about the um county getting in touch with the county. Have you had, you know, as a possible partnership, 
have has that started yet or where are we with that no Just with that figure in with these other options if that's a possibility so it doesn't I haven't done that yet because I first wanted to have a meeting with Anthony. We're still in that phase. Yeah, I don't I don't want to make any moves yet without first having some more some consultation. Yeah, that was sort of like a a a, a teaser to the movie that's going to come out in a little while. Yeah. So we haven't gone to talk to them yet, but right. but it's an option that could be there. Right. Um just sort of making sure everybody knows everything we're looking into, but we're we aren't at that stage okay. quite yet. All right. Because I was thinking, but we will look and see if it is it is an option. We just haven't yeah. gotten to that stage. All right. If, I just, if we were to have to move quickly, that's why I'm wondering about that. So quickly ish. I mean, I was talking to Leslie about this, where there is, where there's so many things going on right now. I think there is something to be said for taking a little bit of time, a month or so, while we're doing the feasibility study, to to look into all of this right. because there's a lot of there's a lot, right? And a lot to go on. So while we while we do need to have some sense of urgency, I do think that there is something to be said for uh, taking a little bit of time while we're conducting the feasibility uh, study. On on the other side, looking into all the options here and really weighing them, because once you get into into the meat of the matter, it can be a little bit confusing and a lot in there. So I think there is. While we do want to move sort of quickly, I think there is something to be said to make sure that we look into. Them. Yeah. One, one thing that might factor in the timing issues um, is the rate at which EMC expects to be paid. So, like, if we, we're not going to pay them a million bucks on day one. It's going to be, right? It's right. Be and that's figured into. Figured out. So, that, do we know that yet? So, that's something that we, that the, what are we, we've, we talked about that. The, um, like the the gap loan or the because we don't make the first if we borrow the money we don't make the first payment for a year from the time that you sign on a loan so depending on the but, route that you take there could be interest there oh, could be interest payments during that time not that's not we went with that savings there was 100 percent the interest <laughs> Uh, these are not these ones they actually they said but, but uh, you know other there could be other yeah, they, terms in other ways. actually they sent me the amortization and there isn't you don't pay for the for you don't pay for a year yep right so these are all the important yeah, yeah so this is all right it's the, it's, yeah right yeah. so theoretically yeah. you know, in that avenue yes it does yeah so room has to be on board <laughs> and maybe a few others. <laughs> right. Well, we haven't had any conversations. We we aren't even. No. Right. That's a few other people I need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're not even. You know, we're just we're just trying to figure out our options at this point. Right. We're not. Yeah. You know. Well, there's Bill. This will come up. We'll, we'll move to the feasibility study shortly. Yeah. Bill, time so we've talked the related subjects. Is there anything more about the? Otherwise, about the HVAC project at this point. Yeah. So more than anything, I just wanted everybody to know sort of where EMC was in right. their work. Was well, so there any issues about well, logistical issues about the staff or the programming or anything that would think that would be disturbed by the project that needs to be taken into account? Not really, because well, the roofing stuff's all on the outside. So that's it. The lighting will be done throughout the building, but it's all going to be, you know, it's a little bit here, a little bit there. There's no reason to not start it whenever EMC is ready to go. No. In terms we, of programming. Or okay. No, I mean, we'll, we'll just, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we'll work. We had a big project, you know, before, and we, you know, I'm, that's, yeah, we'll just coordinate it yeah. as... Yeah, I think I asked that's EMC that question when they presented yeah, here, we'll and just, they basically said it's it's it, it can be happening simultaneously. It's right, we'll just we'll just coordinate it. You know, library activities. Right. It's interesting when you ask that question, John. When you use the word disturbed, I was thinking, will the staff be bothered in some way? Um, because, for example, there won't be any AC this summer again, and I just wonder. Um, I. I I did hear a comment from a staff member of, you know, well, why don't we just get heat pumps? 
And so yet again, there's going to be another year. So I, you know, that's that's what when I felt I'm disturbed, I was like, oh, how is the staff going to feel? You've been working on this for so many well, years. I think that's so, that's a case of point where Leslie and then the respective committee chairs, if it needs going to the all staff meeting and explaining, mm -hmm. you know, this is this is a major, major project. It's not mm -hmm. simple. We don't have a, a spigot of money we can just open and, and go ahead. So, right. I, I know everyone would like you to upgrade their house. It's not like just putting one up yeah. in your house and, mm -hmm. and there you have it. You right. get a seventy five hundred dollar rebate and stay locked in the exactly. sunset. <laughs> so they have to be a bit different. Information <laughs> flow. I mean, it'll still still be disgruntled, understandably, but allay some of that by yeah. telling them what we're. Yeah. Doing. But I think I'm also if they know the end is in sight, huh? like yeah. that, there'll be there's something you know yeah. they have something a they happening. know that something's coming. Yeah, yeah just a, just the communication. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. just hearing that there are these steps that are happening. I right. think that has to, really yeah. that has to help. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the gift acceptance policy. Uh, Leah. Yes. Yeah, so that was included in the packet, yeah, and it really. I think it's really just one area. You can see the kind of the wordsmithing that happened. Most of this is language clarification, and that we usually do not bring for a board trustee vote. So I do want to call attention, unless there were specific questions on the other areas. It's on the second page under contributions of real estate, works of art, collections. It's Way about separate documents. I didn't see securities mentioned by name. Yeah, they were. Were they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're in there somewhere. Yeah, I know I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I just want to make sure if it goes back to the policy and personnel committee that we're addressing um, it. In the I would suggest way. having a sort of a sort of an autonomous session that talks about what the, how to deal with non-cash financial gifts like to like security, well, security generally. Well, you've already got real estate with, and, other, and art and stuff like that, so you have yeah, separate separate right, separate yeah. for securities. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's one of these issues that I find with the policy is that sometimes you're you don't want to get too too yeah. specific. No. You start getting tied in. You want to leave there's some umbrella yeah. wiggle room for decision making. Yeah. So I don't know, I don't know how does everybody else feel because I I understand the point yeah. you're making. I'm not sure. And something could just be mentioned that maybe at discretion on board something to do with that. Like, if you could sort of have a, have an approval workflow for anything that's that might be weird, like like. Um, but making Maybe a you could have about... a selection policy, just like in a material selection policy, when whether you'll select a certain. I I think that you're you're looking for language, perhaps that that saying um, that while we appreciate everybody's donations, the type and form of the donation and its acceptance is at our discretion. You, you're, you're looking to build in the wiggle room, as you said, but on our side. But like you know, a real estate investment trust or a, or a, or derivative of various kinds may not be something that we want to deal with. Yeah, you yeah. can't liquidate them except they're you know. Yeah. Like in the case of REITs, you can only liquidate them in, in the particular prescribed time yeah. uh -huh. It seems like it would almost need a separate section because it because that concept could apply to a lot of these areas because there's more. I, I would. You, yes. you may want to have some general consider some general governing rules and put things like we have the right to refuse anything we want in the right kind of language. I think no, it's, 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 and then you're covered. Having a having an acceptance uh, committee or something, or have the finance committee or some committee have to approve any weird. Right. Well, we, do, we could maybe add something to the last paragraph, which already says intended to cover the more common types. It is understood that special gifts or circumstances may require a case-by-case -case review of the board of trustees, or I mean, maybe we just need to add something that we, you know, need another sentence to that. Yeah, but, does that cover it? Well, maybe that, maybe right, that just says it. we're going to review it. Does that cover it? I mean, I do too. Look, it just says it's 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 something unusual, oh, right, right. and we can yeah. deem what that is. Yeah. So maybe that covers it. Security is in the domain, so that, you know, yeah. that, right. I think that might be covered. Under yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that was what was intended yeah. by that. Okay. okay so that okay. Might, it might be covered. It's just it is something that mm -hmm. that you have to yeah. You don't accept. I mean, the we that can decide oh, what yeah. what's yeah. A, what we sit as a special you know special circumstance. Yeah. So <laughs> if it were something where it's a, that special gifts such such as or use I don't think we should. I don't think we should, I don't think we should describe. I would leave out the such as. Yeah. yeah. We're open. Thanks for noticing that, Leslie. That's good. I think that that covers it. I think so too. So too. Um, Other question was the of the greater value. Yeah. Well, the other thing was um, that top paragraph. I just want to know the rationale before the about it was the library board or designee. Yes. Now we change it to the librarian. Yeah. Yes, and I yeah. think that. And I just wanted the rationale. What was what was it felt that was better? I'm not really arguing at this point. Another evening. Because we couldn't figure out who. I mean, there was it was not clear who that designee would, would be, other than the library uh, director. Yeah, that was the yeah, that's that's right. that's that's duties. Simple yeah. We felt it was a substantive enough change yeah. that needed to be in the right. discussion. Okay. Because, and and we we actually spent a bit of time on that. Right. I think that was that was the why yeah. this came because yeah, Judy was asking the question of who who else really? would you designate be yeah, I that think, had that had any authority. Um, you know. Yeah, that's what I was I was trying to think in my mind when I read this that I couldn't. Yeah, that's what that's kind of how this came to the board, right? Okay. Because who but, who but would that be? We didn't really answer your first question point, which is about the, the term greater value, because I was kind of wondering that myself. But again, it's this idea that it's relative, it's a concept yeah. and not pinning it down. Right. How would you define give it us, further? But yeah, give us the flexibility. But, but yeah. this is an example of where the, the 
flow of the decision making would be. It is the it is the, the trustees mm -hmm. or if, if the trustees choose to designate it, it's showing the pathway of decision gotcha. making. So, do, do we need to um do, do we need to define I don't think we do, but I want to pose the question. Uh, on page two, the first paragraph, contributions of real estate, works, and collections. Um, do we need to define that further when we would designate or uh, when we would defer to Leslie, to the library director? Or are we all comfortable that for ourselves and for the future, that that's enough to that say is, we'll yeah. decide? In all honesty, it's probably, it's going to be brought to our attention really from right. monthly anyway, and then it's us making that decision in the group. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm thank I'm you. With it. Good. Yeah, I too. I think just quickly, um, what you said, um, a list of magazines and newspapers will be provided, and it just seems like that was dangling. Like, yeah. To whom will be provided? I mean. Yeah. Well, I think the, what happened with that one was that the term solicited, if you see what yeah. was con, co crossed out, and um, Judy, our, our attorney that's in the, on the committee, was pointing out that that's the only time that the word solicited was mm -hmm. used, and technically there are going to be times where you're going to be, it, she felt like there should be consistency of language, and so we chose to take it out, right. and it is the only uh, time where we there is a pro, an actual program, which is as we all know, the, the list of periodicals is is provided that mm -hmm. we can uh, choose to support. Um, so that's how that language yeah, is developed. It's, it's provided or who's provided to whom? That's what they say. Yeah, the language just, maybe. just seems like it would be a little bit of, of an incomplete. Sense. Yeah, yeah. It felt like it was dangled. I mean, just yeah, yeah we, we had so, a different. We had to was provided to, but we didn't. We yeah. took that out because it wasn't. Or assembled or will they accept? Is offered. available is available. Well, okay. but it's offered to potential donors. But it's, I don't like the potential okay. donors because it's, it's not to oh to donors to it's oh right because we had patron. I mean, it is available. It probably work. I mean, because you you're it's trying available. to say yeah. that there is a list of the it's available. Then let's just maybe go. Is it available? Yeah, yeah. Then. That's yeah. not better than yeah. Well, then 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 if it, somebody wanted to do then they yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. you need. I think it's the idea that's then yeah then we could just because it started as solicited uh, which it kind of it kind of is I mean it's, yeah. it is solicited but okay so we're changing that to is available yeah, yeah. Oh. everybody's yeah. comfortable with that change. Yeah. and then and then I was just curious under the um you talked about a material selection policy and I was wondering with the memorial and um honorary gifts did that follow the policy as well? Because I was just thinking, you know, somebody could decide to give something in honor of somebody that would you really want it. So is that would they have to follow the materials policy? That's all. I was just well, if you covered it by the policy with, yeah, with, with your last with the end with your last last sentence in that or the last yeah, paragraph. I think it's that last paragraph goes that. Oh okay. we covered that too. Okay. Wouldn't it? I would think. No? Oh, if it's an unusual yeah. thing yeah. at your discretion. Yeah. Okay. You don't have your discretion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I could see things could be offered that we, we might not want. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. We always have the authority to turn them down. Yeah. One last yeah. language to find just to down the phone. It says plan giving up things may include but not limited to. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I yeah. saw that too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Leslie, I forgot I saw that one. What did I miss? It's um it's the red second plan giving under opportunities may include one, two, three, but four, are not five, limited five. to. Is that what I got? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I I had written that. Yeah. But are not limited but to. Are. Forgot the R. Well, yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Okay. So for, 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 about, for approval. Okay. Agreed. Our, is there a motion to approve the policy with the amendments as discussed in the meeting today? Second. All in favor? Nice job. Agreed. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, We've touched on this a little bit already, but the capital campaign feasibility study. Uh, Leslie has asked me to um, sort of lead this discussion, um, hopefully with the end result being that we will um, 
have a motion at the end of the discussion to have the trustees approve um, a payment from the capital reserve account to pay for a capital campaign consultant to initiate the process of feasibility study for the capital campaign. So we've been talking a lot about loans and whatnot to pay for the actual improvements, but what we need to do also alongside that chicken egg thing is determine um, how the capital campaign, how much the capital campaign can actually raise, um, what the structure of that looks like, uh, who's involved exactly, um, and what the community will support in terms of that fundraising um, campaign. So uh, Leslie and um, Samantha have initiated some discussions with some consultants who would be potentially doing this work. Um, and those discussions are ongoing and time is of the essence. So um, Leslie is meeting with another one tomorrow. We have some preliminary numbers, but we don't know yet which one is going to be the final choice. Um, so what we are hoping is if the trustees would approve an up to amount for covering this expense so that we are ready to hit the ground running and move ahead with someone once this is determined. So the up to amount would be 28,500 for the highest amount that would be the outlay <clears throat> for this service. And that covers like a two or three month process um, it's very extensive. There is a lot of detail that they've written up um, in their proposals that I'm sure we can share with the group at some point in the very near future if needed, but it involves um, interviews, detailed interviews with um, up to 30 um, potential donors in the community, getting a sense from them as to you know what how this might look to them. Um, it builds the case for support that we would be using throughout the campaign ongoing to raise the money. It really just lays um, an architecture and a structure on the process and helps to actually identify people who might not only serve on the committee, but also be major donors um, and also helps to uh, coalesce trustees and you know staff, um, the eventual campaign committee to start working together towards the same goal. So I, they would be an advisory to um, sort of herding the cats as well as <laughs> sort of initiating the process uh, which we all need. I think we could all agree. I don't think, um, I have never been through a capital campaign before. I don't know. I so this is kind of new to all of us. So these, these folks are very experienced. They work in Maine. Um, they have references that include a lot of libraries, um, some of them, um, and also other nonprofits. So um, this is kind of their world. And uh, so it sounds like a big price tag, but um, it is necessary for us to be able to consider embarking on a capital campaign. And again, 28.5 would be the highest. That would be, it. that's the highest number for a quote that we've gotten. Um, the others on the lower end have been closer to 15, I think. So um, there's a very good chance that it will not be that number, but we would like to at least have the um, the approval from the trustees to, if that ends up being the number that it's, we can just go ahead and without convening again or having a, an email vote. And I'll just add one thing. So the capital campaign committee is meeting again on, uh, next week, next, the 22nd, I believe. I don't remember my calendar handy, but I think it's next. So I'm meeting with one more consultant tomorrow, one that I have not met with. I've met with the other two. Okay. Um, and 19th, then so the 19th, 19th. Yeah, okay. We went around a few days, but yes. Yeah, so we're okay. So yes. So we're meeting the, the, the group is meeting next week. Uh, and at that meeting, our plan is to make the final decision on, um, uh, which which consultant um, we're, we're going to choose? So that's why we would consultant. Uh, yeah, you'll recommend recommend to, recommend to, recommend to, recommend to the board. board. Choose to recommend to the board. However, uh, so well, wait a minute. Wait, no, but that that I don't think that's. I, Okay. I'm a little because I think what we're asking the board to do here is to okay. is to There's give us the go ahead go ahead to to right. to spend up to a certain point. amount and to accept the the committee's decision. Um, decision. That's right. So the That's committee's going to right. vote to decide. Right. right. So we can right. So we don't have a proposal to share with you yet. So we can certainly send you the proposal, but you're sort of going to also be accepting the committee's recommendation. You know, decision. Um, decision. now, decision. you know, as a sort of a preempt, yeah, yeah. so that we can move forward.
Are you are you meeting with them alone then at this point? I mean, is that yeah? Because so yes, so gathering the information. We've already so we things? we've received proposals from th all from three. I just have not personally met. We've already got a proposal from right. I just want to meet because I've not met them. But and there's um, also some some information that one of the proposals raised, as we talked about, is what would be expected of the staff to assist right. in the capital campaign. Right. Just what and so one. Some of that was not clear. Clear on this. Right. It was also the donor, the donor search um, access was not necessarily yeah. spelled out. We got a little more information on that, but I want to get a little bit more still, yeah. even. Um, yeah. So the so so yeah. So we're asking the board to approve spending up to a certain amount, uh, but also then just going with whatever the the committee recommends. So this would be. We would just let you know of the decision, but the decision will be made by the by the capital campaign committee so that we could move forward with this. We would be sort of already to undertake capital. I agree. Right. I agree. Yes. Because we don't know what we can raise. Exactly. And this would this will I believe this will inform us and in, on on the loan, like really what mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think right. The structure set at some rate is it more hourly or is it a, uh, it's a it's a um based on the the project the scope of the project so it's not it's not does it do, do you have benchmark built in so that every um proposer knows that there are benchmarks uh uh that can that govern uh, successful completion of their work Expect well, expectations or what expectations or benchmarks they have to meet so they uh -huh. don't get to the end and say our work's done this is what you owe us and you don't have a recourse to say well actually we were contracting you to do x and you haven't delivered that part so deliver well, the, the, the engagement's only for like it's months, right? it's for feasibility yeah. study yeah. So they they in the proposal it's just for the study so they they've already outlined what they're going to do yeah. for the study and the payment structure, I think it's, you know, like a third, a third, a third or something. Yeah, like that it's well. all very clear. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's what, right. What's it's, expected and what will be happening. Right. So they outline what we'll get for the study. Yeah. I mean, it's. And there was, at least one of them had a timeline as well, yeah, saying right. by yeah. week four, we will have done this. Okay. Week seven, we will have done this, et cetera. They deliver your dollar goal, your case for support, your campaign planning committee, your prospect list of feasibility interviews infrastructure, staffing, and systems, and campaign timing and costs. And, and between them, do you see oh, yeah. similar yeah. similar sorts of things described between the three different proposals? Is it there? Sorry, are they, they, I didn't really, I didn't hear what you said. Are they, they, are they, are the, are they the, the deliverables the same. They're one's, fle two, one's fleshed out less than the other two, but mm -hmm. they're, which is one we're consider we're not the super fleshed out one is the twenty eight five right but <laughs> that's not the most yeah, but it's yeah. like uh, yes let's just turn the key and go but it's twenty eight five so right um that's also one we thought was a little overdone I mean it was a, in a way a little bit boilerplate because the scope of it like the interviews and the donor base you know we talked about right. five hundred people plus hmm. oh, about oh really so it, was, <laughs> it didn't seem as well as, yeah one of the things Leslie was going to ask about is whether they would. Be scaled back and scale back, back, scale back in the portion. number. Yeah, the other... we're going to have an interview with thirty. I think is what they right. ended up with. And but the donor base, the potential donor base analysis was five hundred people. Yeah, so that was it was something else. That, it was out of beyond the scale of what the other two right. proposed. Right, and and also we're looking at geographic location of where the the consultants are because that that could make a big difference and oh, and knowing the community. So there's other factors involved as well that we're that we're looking at. If the visit needs further assistance in the course of the campaign, is there, um, I, I'm sure these folks haven't even considered that, but would we then have to go out and hire perhaps another consultant? Um, or, or, it depends. They all do that work, on. but whether they could fit us into their schedule. I mean, there's those are conversations to have as well. Yeah, they offer those services. They do. We have to right, right. see whether that's, you know. So would that be a factor in making the decision as to whether they would be available if we were up for it to help us figure out through the campaign? It, it might be, but we also have to see what the results of they could back with the feasibility and study and say we don't 
this isn't a feasible, you know, it's not a feasible campaign or we don't only think you could, you know. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Um, it is a feasibility study, you're saying. It's all of it, so right. They, they could, could come, come back and say, say, you're not ready. Yeah. Right, right, they could. Okay. I just, or they could yeah. say you might be able to raise half of what you need. Right, um, or they okay. might be saying okay. you, you might be able to raise $500,000, which in that case we'd have to consider because when Samantha and I did a project, we raised 350 on our own that we might want to, if it's something like that, we might want to raise it in-house. You know, those are all things we have to think about. Who knows what the results, or they may say you could raise three and a half million. You know, we don't know. Yeah. Well, they might say there's a millionaire that lives down the street. So, right. You guys have never asked for money and right. we love libraries, you know, so <laughs> yeah, right. they are. Right. <laughs> there was a guy who walked in on, on Giving Tuesday when Rick was here. He's, he's gone now, but he, he was a we gotta hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get his name? <laughs> so, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, their fee is not based on whether or not we can go ahead or how much we can raise or anything like that. No. I just, no, I think that's really it is what it is. But, okay. Is it least proportional to the amount that we hope to raise? Yes, because they they would be they would potentially be interviewing more people potentially. Yes. Well, that was the the higher quote actually. They 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 wrote it in as three and a half million. Right, which is because not right. So we could go back. You know, if we thought you know, so that was a question we had whether we um you know if we choose yeah, yeah. to. Is there a sliding scale? Does the committee have a figure in mind? I mean, I, I know it's still uh, feasibility, but I mean, have you talked about... Well, we need the price tag from... We need that. that you know, the year that what? But the, what we want to spend? Or they no, 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 what we would raise. Oh, what we yeah. ideal... What do we want? Well, that's part of what that's they... Right, oh, I know, yeah. but, but I just wonder if somewhere in the back of your minds or whatever, there is a figure. Well, that's you know, I'm Tommy asking. brought up the point that if we're going to be going through the process of doing a capital campaign, that maybe we should you know, bump up the number a certain amount, maybe it's 2 million that we would put into the endowment. So let's cushion the endowment with this, if, if we could support that. So we have to determine, we haven't had, we haven't completed those discussions. Well, I think. One other thing just to mention um, is that there are other things in the capital plan that needs the improvement plan that need to be done that mm -hmm. would require. So yeah. I think it's likely to say that it, we would, Probably recommend somewhere north north of one and a half, probably near two or so. I would right. think, given that there are other things that right. also did need to be done, and people right. going to do yeah. it. Maybe. That's kind of what I was asking. Is there a figure somewhere floating around? Not set yet, but I know in my mind it's hovering around. The yeah, okay. that's kind of what I heard. There's also we just with getting shoring up the endowment. You know, given right. given the budget so, problem we had this year, right. it's becoming obvious that we need to really work on the right so and those are the things like sort of you know i've talked about with the consultants i've met with so we may you know the cons the campaign once we select we maybe we'll have a you know a meeting with that consultant and you know talk about those things so that yeah, you know. like i said they i think they really put a uh an architecture and a series of steps in place right. that we can rely on to not just be running in circles right. which <laughs> Not a, not a so word. that's what we need is to, to have a motion okay. for the board to, you know, agree concept, you know, conceptually that we need, obviously, to do this um, if we're going to move forward. And, well, it's not only that, it's almost well, setting the cost. And right, exactly. setting the cost. It's, it's not, right, it's agreeing that we need a $28,500. Right. Yep. Right. To not to exceed, right. which we think will be, it will be a bit less, but we, you know, we want Again, the high, the okay. most it could be, so we don't have to come back. Is there, the is there a motion? I move, I move that we present that we, we vote on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. With the cap. With a cap. With a cap. Twenty eight five. Twenty eight five, and and go with their rec, go with their decision on the on the particular group that's going to work on. Okay. It. Is there a second? No. no. All in favor? It should be noted there's a lot of people at this table who are part of that committee. Yeah, I was just going to ask, could you just remind us who is on the committee? <laughs> well, uh, people are and staff, yeah, uh, Leslie and um, Samantha, but uh, myself, Tommy, Anthony, mm -hmm. 
Carl yeah. and Rick. Mm -hmm. Good. So good. Yeah. Okay, and now for the really fun stuff. Oh. The budget. Oh. So, so we're going to we'll introduce it. Person or tell me or vote. I think the only thing I want to say to start is that we're not expecting the board to vote on it yes. today. Is that really this is a first just to answer questions to give you a chance to look at it. Um, oh. Right. And just to to go over the highlights, right, right, and the low that, that being, <laughs> yeah, and the right, just to, really just to, so. And I think the notes before we spell out, the, right, those are very helpful. By the oh, way, yeah. really helpful. Yeah, I think exactly. it, it really gives you the snapshot. Yeah. If you read yeah. the notes, you yeah. look at the differences. It's pretty. It's all there. It's, um. The revenue was the goal was the hardest. Yeah. Right. I mean because uh, we took away the late fees, the endowment draw is down significantly down. Yeah. And we didn't want to make up for it just by increasing the municipal a crazy amount. So that's that's right. the same increase that we had last year. Right. Even what it was the year before. The municipal increase? I'll have to look that up. I can um I think I have a Google Drive. Uh, I thought it was four point five, but I could be completely wrong. Just a memory. I don't have a yeah it, it, and easily yeah, accessible. Five. Um last year was five. Was five, right? Last year was five. Yeah. Uh, uh, 23, 24 with current year was five percent. Yeah, last right. Yeah. Well, if you look at the budget, so you can see, we could figure out it from, so if you look at 21, 22, oh. 22, 23, you can see the amount it went up. So you could figure out, you know, approximately yeah. percentage. 371.8 versus 410.6. I cannot do math in my head. Different yeah. kind of engineer. 122. Oh no, that's the that's the endowment. It's two eighty one nope, to two ninety three. Yeah. So it was a fairly small increase, twenty one twenty two to twenty two twenty three. Right. Exactly. And maybe three percent. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. that's about what it was. Yeah. Well, there's less than four, I think. I think the year before might have been two percent, two seventy six to two eighty one is yep. pretty little. Five thousand. I mean, that's very small. I had a, a comment, Leslie, about the note on municipal, um, and I'm putting on my taking off my my city councilor budget hat and putting on my PFL board member budget hat. And I would urge you to, uh, when talking about a two point a CPI of two point seven, I'm glad you picked September because it went down. Yeah. Um, but but I would also ask that you do some comparison to some other benchmark numbers. Um, I'm not sure that, first of all, use whichever one is largest, number one, um, because you're going to come to us and say, as the city and say, this is how much we want and this is where expenses were. Um, but I, I would urge you to look for something. CPI is not always considered the most realistic slice and understand that I'm not an economist. My my economics come from marketplace at 10 minutes of the hour. Um, but uh, for example, as a cost of living increase, this the coli or coli, a better benchmark, and does it look like a bigger number? Because if someone is going to say, well, they're asking for five percent, but the CPI was only 2.7, I know. From a city administration standpoint and a library administration standpoint, the economy is recovering, but my costs are still way high. So that story might be helpful to tell in April when we get to budgeting season. It, does that make sense a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Yeah, because I think that 2.7, I know when it, when you guys come to talk to the board of select board and we say, oh, she, you know, she dies, 2.0 or whatever, whatever yeah. that is, 2.7. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're considering a 2.7 increase, and you said that showed up in wages. Right. But yeah, exactly. so we need lots of stuff. Right. Yeah. But, but there's so many other factors because we rely, the thing is, we rely on our endowment. And when our endowment drops, where, where do we get our money? So right. we don't the have other, the, the other piece. The other but, piece is to <laughs> tell other li other libraries work on municipal funds. We're unique. I mean, that they have to remember that. That other uh, most libraries are, depend on the municipality. Period. Right. They're public libraries. They're public library. Yeah, exactly. I mean, from my take, it's a very good and easy story to sell. You know, sell me this right. pen that. The city doesn't have to maintain the building. We're really good at at maintaining a city, not necessarily we're not property managers. We don't want to be. Um, and and the value brought by the library from this huge range, growing range of programs um, is is obviously something you, is, is not a hard thing to sell. Thank you. I have a slightly different view as I graze at the finance committee. I'm sort of maybe more a minority. I I reluctantly support this bu budget because I'm concerned about the 5% increase um, for the municipalities, but um, we need to do it. So I, I do support it. However, I really think that we need to look more broadly, more creatively, on trying to um, expand our funding sources. We did put that in the strategic plan. And I think that um, we really should take that seriously and look um, and see and try to, for example, um, raise our endowment. I mean, if we had a larger endowment, there's nothing to say that we couldn't grow more from the endowment um, rather than continuing to ask um, mm -hmm. more from the municipalities. I don't mean more percentage wise, but if we had a larger endowment or more, all I'm saying is I think that we are, in my opinion, is stuck in this mold of it's, you know, the municipalities and that's where we get the primary, our primary funds. Um, and I'm just saying, I think we need to also look at the possibility of other funds and, um, other models, that was something we were going to do is to look at the municipal models that we have and which, I, you know, that hasn't been done yet. And I'm just concerned that, you know, we keep asking the municipalities um, to increase the amount that they donate. So I'll just, that's my, right. my view. But, yeah. so, I don't see it as a donation though, because they're, they're getting a service. Sorry, sorry. So my, <laughs> My point is that it is exactly where you were going, that this is a benefit that the communities are receiving. And it shouldn't be couched in terms of the, uh, you know, this year, um, the fuel price index has increased by X amount of dollars. It should really be based on what benefit they're receiving, what the, the children are receiving, what the community is getting, and what would you pay if you had to maintain a library? Um, you know, that, that, it's, it's probably a significant amount more. So I, I think that the set, the selling part of it is really look at what you're getting for your, your contribution. Right. Yeah. I think so something I think about all the time is so we're, we're not a minimum units, but we're, we're a nonprofit. But we, we, I always say this we, we, we act. And you know, provide the same services as a municipal right. library. Exactly. So, 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 what do we do? Do we charge like a municipal library, or do we, you know, what do we do? Like, I, I can't figure it out. You know, I do we? I mean, charge. I mean, do do we ask for money in accordance with what other municipal libraries get? You know, as far as like, you know, what the 
sort of the average per capita, which I've, you know, shared and will share again, which is about $32 a person, you know, for, for, um, you know, library service around the state. I think that's a good statistic to have in the, right. in the yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we like have Ruth to sort saying. of decide, like, what is it? This is something the board, I mean, does the board feel that we should be charging more for library service to the town? Like, we, I don't know how everybody, I know Peggy feels, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, you know, um, but that's just a conversation we should have too, you know, I, I mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, towns all have such different personalities, they different do, right? perceptions do, of this, but I right? Think, so what I, 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 I think I, Austin I, probably be like, sure. Okay. But I own <laughs> Right. <laughs> but I don't know what the board members think, you know, aside from the towns, you know, I know. I think this is reasonable. I, I think it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a reasonable increase. The other, it, it is. Like, a I mean, and the thing, so the other thing I think about is, as I'll, and I'll say, I, I'm, this budget, it, it scares me because when you look at what we're, we're having to use surplus mm -hmm. in my 10 years plus here, we have never used surplus. Yeah. To, to, we have never used surplus to balance a budget. I'll say this one more time. We've never used surplus to balance the budget. What are we going to do next year to balance this budget? So I will go to every single town and say, look at this. We are asking for 5%, but look at what we are doing to balance the budget. Right. Yeah. That's my story. I will, And that's, I don't know what else to do. We, well, you're providing, you're providing a service to the communities and the endowment is, fu is funding half of that service 45 percent of it 45. yeah yeah what better deal can That's you get deal and 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 the thing they'll say is if if we lose towns either bath is going to have to take it over and our budget is a million dollars who's who's going to run this library <laughs> i don't know i mean i know i'm going to throw this on rue but literally who's going to run the library <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna who is going to run this library so i i don't know but we this is this budget is unsustainable i i i, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen after this year we so the, i mean you know we're using this this unrestricted twenty thousand dollars this is the second year in a row we're doing it as i said we are going to see a drop in the endowment again next year um, we 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 can expect an additional drop right. in the five percent because in the finance committee we've I've done scenarios out for the next year because we're going to be dropping off the next few quarters of over nine million dollars um, in in um, um, so you know we do a twelve quarter average right. and the numbers we're going to be dropping are in the nine millions. We our our next four quarters will not reach okay. nine million. Oh, so we okay. are going to be dropping some very high numbers. Okay. Even if we stay, and I reported this at the finance committee. Even if we stay at eight million for the next four quarters, we're going to be see about a twenty thousand dollar drop in the endowment over the next mm -hmm. year. Right. How are we going to make that up? So I don't want to be, you know, a negative, but we, we, I think the board needs to understand we're using surplus already. We're looking at about another $20,000 drop in the endowment. What dictates how much we can drop in the endowment? The board. So the board mandates so that the 5%. There's a governance aspect to this. That yeah. The board is, the, yeah. the board has the fiduciary responsibility. Right. Everybody's Roger, sitting Roger, in this Roger room. Roger was on the committee that said that yeah right right yeah but but next year we're going to be this is this is real and this is you know so i just want to be clear i mean i think the five percent this is a bit I mean, it's a bigger issue uh i would just think that it's really really important for us to craft the message from the perspective of the people that we're asking for support for all of you, for us, we look at this budget and we have a preliminary with it that, that others don't have. Right. And when they hear, you know, we just want to, I think we need to look at the language that we use when we try to sell this budget to them and, and not put it in terms that make sense to us. 
but the whiff on the what's in it for me for them. Because as an example, if we start to talk about we're going to pay this out of surplus, they're going to say, well, why is it going up with a surplus? Yeah. Right. Wait, why is say that again? What is so what? What surplus are we talking about? That and that's, my that's my point, is that they're not going to have the familiarity with the budget. So we need to be really careful the yeah. language that we use when we bring it to them with the 5% yeah. interest. And we had some unexpected discounts last year because of people taking leave. Oh, yeah, you got the right. Yeah. Like, I think the, the statistic we were talking about a few moments ago is actually really powerful. The fact that if you didn't have the endowment, you wouldn't be paying at this rate per household, you'd be paying at this other rate per household. Right. That's really valuable. Right. I just think we need to reevaluate our messaging to the communities mm -hmm. uh, and put it into language that, that is meaningful to them and builds value mm -hmm. from their perspective, not just from our perspective. Yeah, yeah I mean, that. so my question was, oh, wait, you can leave. Right. So my question was, thank you. Surplus means something different to me than it sounds like it does to the library. Like, what does that mean? That you, I mean, you don't you? We're under budget, basically. Okay. And so we didn't. So are we never under budget? The pet, see, we don't know what we, that doesn't necessarily mean that we didn't, it just depends. Like, we don't know what we're going to get fundraising. There's some unknowns. It's not like taxes. We don't know exactly what, like, we did a really good fundraising year. We don't, we, we did better than we expected. So we got more, we got more gifts. We don't always know what we're going to get. So that would mean to me that you, yeah, that the next, the upcoming budget is less. Right. Oh, I'm so oh, so our, most of the surplus came from um, staff that were out. So we didn't have to pay them while they were out. So we have to pay them next year, right? Yes. So we're expecting okay. that they're going to work the entire right. time. We yeah. can't work as right. good that somebody might be out on FMLA or anything like that. So that's basically why it's, that was. Another point that I want to mention is that um, a lot of our, some of our expenses are also based on a projection. So that could have something to do with it too. It could go either way, it could go up like oil, like because we're, we're working more than a year oh, out, right. and we're looking at a projection on what it might cost us for oil. We know that that goes by the day. Same with electricity, we can usually, we usually make a, a deal, but some of that are variables that can affect the budget when you're in it, up or down, which could result in us coming in under what we expected, having a little bit more uh, revenue, a surplus, or it could just as easy result in us having uh, to put to we're uh, in rent. So, well, what do the towns call it? I don't, I'm sure it's well, the same. If we if we don't spend what we budget, um, and we have excess money, we put it into something called undesignated yeah. fund balance. Well, so well, this well, is what the general. So, with the basically what the board does is vote, and it usually goes to capital reserve for like yeah. project, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So that so that's just a messaging thing. Like so, I would say yeah, instead of thing, taking yeah. us additional money that we were, you know, we didn't spend it because of these FMLA or whatever it is. Uh, instead of being able to put that away towards capital improvements in future years, we're being forced to spend right. it mm -hmm. in order right. to keep the budget low, right? Yeah. It's just about how you say it. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it makes a big difference I mean, to the exactly. That's what we would have done otherwise, putting it in the budget. Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. But That's right, right. Urgent. But the idea that we actually have it, we may not have that next right. year. Right. That's that's the message that I want to get across is that there's no guarantee that we have that money to put to that budget. So because remember, Jason often asks, um, like, what happens when you don't spend all this money? I don't know that I knew that it ought to, and I'm a there are some very simple right. Well, I have do did not that 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 excess or this money that's not spent. Goes into yeah. Well, he usually asks, and also, so what I do for I've been bringing this. I do I give a budget versus actual, and I bring that to the towns, and then I with Jason especially I've show he can see exactly what we budget, exactly what we spent, and and then I'll tell him like the board vote voted to put this to capital reserve, or the board voted to put this into the endowment, or you know. Can I just add something to that? Um, one thing, so the most of the reason why, if there is anything extra at the end of the fiscal year, we put it to capital reserve is because currently 
we are not budgeting for that, which we 100% of So that part of the mm -hmm. issue is we have not been able to balance a budget with the appropriate amount in per capital reserve, which is a, I don't want to say is a failure, but I'm going to be honest and say that it is because yeah. we absolutely should be. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's why if we happen to come out with where, okay, the projections work to where it was 5% lower on oil and 10% lower on electricity, and somebody happened to be out so they weren't paid through regular salaries, we happen to have an extra 20,000 extra. It really wasn't extra. It should have right. already been yeah. in the so budget. So the word extra. Yeah. It, it just, it yeah. just isn't really, yeah. you know, because we're not budgeting what we should have been anyway because we can't right. make it work. Yeah. That's good. That's I, I, would, I would urge you, Leslie, when you are um practicing or rehearsing before you come in our case before our budget hearings is is think about the question you're going to get or you could get and maybe i'm just repeating what you've already said here is is i'm going to look at that and go okay five percent increase doesn't seem like so much up there because of what we get but then i see that we're using money from reserves does that mean there was extra money left over so come up with other language mm -hmm. That you can eventually detail out that says we are drawing from capital reserves. It goes into capital reserves. We draw it out of capital reserves. And not only that, we're not budgeting. Yeah, it, it, yeah, budgeting. yeah, yeah. And, and that, that's you know that's that's what goes into our discussion when we are when Mark hands us the budget and says, "It's yours now. Have a great time." Um, <laughs> That those are the discussions that come up because we're facing, you know, the the why asked us for a substantial contribution to the new child care facilities, which we all know are desperately needed. But the original ask was for us to bond for it, and and none of us could swallow the cost of borrowing. Yeah. Um, and and that's sort of the the that's the minutia that we're looking at. One more question. Yeah. Um, so, what do you do with the part time? Uh, okay, so, yeah, budget priorities. Part time making 1612 with the increase to Part time making 1692 with the increase to 1892 dash 34, 8, 45. What's the 18 to 30? What's the what? I'm that's sorry. What is that? Like making the increase, that's how much it's going to cost. Oh, okay. oh that's the so, that's the the total okay. amount that that will cost. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's okay. just showing what the, what the overall cost of that is. Oh. Similarly, a question there, it says not included four hours, cataloging, cataloging, 4,100. Is that four hours a week, a month? Or... Oh, a week. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I will clarify. Oh, that's... Like weekly that. i'll add i will put those in Perfect. yeah that that means a week okay weekly but the total is not weekly the what $9, no right we don't pay them about <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i think i would be my next uh, career <laughs> wouldn't be qualified no <laughs> no i don't think so I, yeah. I wish there was a way to, I realize that all of the towns have, have budget constraints and that everybody is looking at, you know, other things they have to pay for. But I don't know of any, you know, other than, than, you know, from for those of you that have seen the per capita rates and and the patent free library of libraries our size, Holton the Holton Library is the only library that is lower per, per capita than the patent free library. I and for you know for what we provide for our services, I don't know what else we can do. I don't know how we can we can continue on this with you know continue the way we're going without cutting services if we if we don't get more from from the municipalities i don't know what to do i think that's a really compelling argument to yeah. say like we're the second lowest per capita 
the library in state. And we want to continue. We don't we want to continue to provide services. In order to do that, we need other revenue streams or we need to increase those revenue streams. I think that's a compelling argument. I think we just need to learn or think about how we can sell that information. You know, how do we how do we brand that market it that yeah. And the point you made um just a little bit ago about like we what you know is the city of Bath would have fund this, what would it the cost. In other words, the endowment is, and that's something I just hadn't really thought about, that the endowment is what keeps the per capita rate. Right, exactly. Well, exactly. exactly. That's right. This is how many this is how many dollars per capita it costs to run the library. Right. We're only asking you for this much. Right. right. And we've done that, but we've I've done that. I mean that's I used to do this. I've done these this um value statements. And then, so what happened was I used to do that and then it got changed to be this other type of document that we now use. That isn't what I use. I used to have a much sort of simpler value statement that says for, it really costs this much per person and we're asking this. So I used to do it very differently and then I, I did it turned into something else. So we can go back to that. We it's just- go back to that. <laughs> I, I, I would advocate for, for the value statement, the I'll go back to something else and try something but, else this year. Okay. But there are like, people like me who are going to want to see the notes. They're still going to want to see the price. How many people in my town actually use the library? Tell me how many people. Yeah, I do that. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I do that. I mean, yeah. that, that, that. And that's that, what I did. Yeah, I'll go, I I'm going to go back year. to something more like that this year. We'll, we'll see. But also include details because, right. you know, it can't be just the glossy. We did talk about the finance committee to try to have a more in town individualized right. um, document mm. to go with the request rather than more yeah. generic. Um, I, I don't think we've, we the, didn't do it last year. But we, we did didn't. some, there's only so much I can get from yeah. about each town that right. that's unique. There's only yeah. so much, you know what I mean? There's well, how many, well, you give, you give us that. I do, I do. do. Right. It's, it's how many, how many people have library right. cards? Yeah. How many people? As far as anecdotal yeah. things, there's only so much that I can have. You and know, even some would be good. Little, there is some. We didn't have. Of, I don't think there was somebody in that. There is. I mean, I I have whatever I gave each town yeah. last year for their annual report. Yeah. And I try to do anecdotal for each one. Are, are there any? Are there any questions? Should as we're talking sort of right? So we're getting up. The support thing. Right. But are but there the any budget. questions about the? The amounts and the allocation of funds or resources that this budget proposes. Uh, there are amounts, you know, any line items that you wanted to discuss, amounts or and or line items that you wanted to discuss. Are we going to that? Uh, I mean, this is still there's still time to talk about it, say next month too, but I still want to do that. I just have a procedural question. My contingency on the last page. How did you come up with one thousand six hundred twenty-eight dollars? The contingency. the contingency line is what I use to balance the, but that's how oh. I get the balance. So it's going to change every year. <laughs> that's the one line. So I need a contingency line because that's what I use to buy like pizza for staff right. meeting or you know. <laughs> so that's the line that balances okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I just. How could you come up with it? Everything else is in round numbers. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the line. That... <laughs> Thank you. That's that's some bulk's questions about the other the other budget. than that. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Is there on the on the things that the budget does not include yep. or is not able to include is there a prior is there a hierarchy of like if we could add one or two of these back in like like has have you identified those or let me look at your list that i can look at um i mean the, the capital reserve is evergreen right that's always in this mm -hmm. list but um i know like children's summer reading might be like a, an opportunity for a grant application but like are these Adding they, these hours, um, how much is that? Like, you know, additional hours for development, like it's sort of like you're, you're, you're curbing something that will help the budget yeah. in the fall. Right. I, year, right? I'd have to, I mean, I could prioritize <laughs> yeah. those. I don't, I don't know that those are, those aren't necessarily prioritized. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a good question though. Yeah, it is a good question. I mean, I could certainly go back and prioritize. And, you know, 
different people on your staff might have a different answer. Of course to that they question, would. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. So we, we would go we would go down this next month. Yeah. Go, go that would be the plan. Yeah. So uh, speaking of next month. So that would be on that would be the ninth. Second Tuesday is on ninth. Oh, yeah. Somebody getting ready for <laughs> Mrs. Claus. I think Mrs. Claus is going on right now. Oh my God. I think. Yeah. <laughs> 6 30, I think. Put in your list, Anthony. <laughs> another, another thing. <laughs> if, there's, if there's nothing more to discuss tonight about the budget, we can continue the discussion next time about the way to promote it and the way we structure it and present, present it to the the towns. Yep. There's nothing else. Is there? And there's nothing, no other messages. What? Yeah. Um, well, so in related to that, um, if because it would be if there's a, a way to sort of jot down all of those messaging things that yep. we've got to proceed with that. I think that would be a good reporter right there. Probably do. Okay. 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 <laughs> and also, yeah, I mean, you can always send to me thoughts too yeah, that you have yeah. would be really helpful. So any thoughts you have, and they might be different for each town, right? So yeah, right. Yeah, if, there, if there's a specific issue, especially in your town that you'd like me to know about, <laughs> um, you know, or something that you never get around because very, that's fine too. Very easy. <laughs> okay. don't, don't I know Ralsic. Well, Ralsic, I don't. You know, Are there any other, never any other. Issues. I will talk about anything else people want to bring up. There's no other new business, I assume. <laughs> if not, then there are motion to adjourn. So much. The right arm of fast or something. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. I think there's dinner. Oh, I do have a few. I'm very. I mean, I should be putting it in.